this balloon is red. It doesn't matter what other people say or what they've been told it is. The fact is, it's red. And it doesn't matter if I hold this balloon in school, in an apprenticeship, in a workplace, in university, or a place of further education. The balloon will continue to be red. I don't think that would offend too many people. But what about when we're talking about holding on to our faith in all these situations we've just mentioned? Fake news. Alternative facts. Live your own truth. We hear these statements and they make us realize that truth is contested these days. The reality of life is that everyone is searching for truth and yet the truth of Christianity is that truth comes to us. Jesus Christ describes himself as the truth, not a truth, but the truth. And it's the truth of Jesus that we at Scripture Union want you to hold on to wherever God places you next. And so let us leave you with Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 to 7. Here we have the Apostle Paul sharing to God's people in the church of Colossae. And so after praying for them and sharing of Christ's supremacy, he shares this encouragement. So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. Do you remember the first time you heard about Jesus? For many in Northern Ireland, we have a rich heritage that means we are privileged to maybe not know when the first time we heard him was. But if you're a Christian, it's because you received Jesus as your Lord. And you may not remember exactly when, and that's okay. The important thing is that you heard and you received Jesus. And not just as Savior and the one who rescues you from your personal rebellion and sin against God, but the Lord of your life. Jesus is king, king over every aspect of your life. Jesus is the one with the power and the authority, and so we pledge our allegiance to King Jesus. One of the hardest things to do in life sometimes is just keep going. I remember running the Belfast Marathon, and you know what was great? The start. The buzz, the hype, the excitement, caught up in a swarm of people. Do you know what else is great? The end. The glory run, the final patch, the finish line. Do you know what was most difficult? The middle. The realization that, yeah, you've gone some distance, but you've still some distance to go, and at times you're unsure of how far you still have to go. But what you know is you have to continue to put one foot in front of the other. Continue. You have to continue. And that's what Paul's advice is to the Colossians. Continue to live your lives in him. Who's the him? It's Jesus. You see, as God looks down and sees us, well, I want you to imagine that this hand is us and this hand is Jesus. Now, without Jesus, we can't get to God. We are separated. But when we receive Jesus as Lord, when God looks down, he sees us in him, in Jesus, in Christ and so with this relationship, here's what we need to be according to the Bible. Rooted. The word rooted has links with plants and trees and the idea of the importance of us being so firmly connected to Jesus with a strong foundation underneath the surface. Built up. Built up. So it's not just about what's going on behind the scenes and in the areas that people can't see, but also thinking back to this picture of a plant it's about the flowering, the blooming, the fruit that is seen. And for you, it's not just about being rooted deep, but about being built up in him. There's a, a growth that takes place, but it's always connected to Jesus. Teaching. We also need good teaching because this teaching from scripture brings strength to your faith, brings strength to our faith, or as Paul says it, strengthened in the faith as you were taught. An 
And even in this sentence, we see this aspect of continuing taking place again. Continue to take on board Christian teaching. Continue to take on board Christian teaching when you leave school. Then gratitude. We need an attitude of gratitude. It can be so hard to be thankful sometimes. We take things for granted. It's easier to spot things that are wrong over things that are right. And maybe you found that as you've sought to figure out what to do next after school. This resource is called Liminal. And a liminal space is one where you're between one safe place and another. In the dangerous crossing, it can be described as the confusing in-between or the neutral zone. And one thing that can help us is thankfulness. Even when things are outside your control, what can you be thankful for? As we look to Jesus, as we think about Jesus, as we grab hold of this idea of continuing in the faith through deep-rooted growth from biblical teaching, then we will overflow with thankfulness. There's no other conclusion we can come to as we see how supreme Jesus really is. As we reflect on what Paul has already told this church in chapter one of this book, the sun is the image of the invisible God. Look at Jesus, you see God. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies, but now he's reconciled you by Christ's body. We had no way to get to God. It's, it's not like he was offering us mates rates to be friends. We were his enemies. And still, still he brought us to himself thanks to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. So never mind holding on to the truth of the red balloon. As you hold on to the truth of who Jesus is and what he's done for you, be rooted, be built up, be strengthened, be thankful. And we're going to think now about what that can look like in practice. I plus F equals T. I wonder if anyone can guess what that stands for. Well, it's not ice plus fire equals trouble. It's information plus formation equals transformation. Information plus formation equals transformation. And transformation is what we want for you in your life. And so it isn't just about sharing what the Bible says, but thinking what practical tips and things that you can do in your day-to-day -day life, your normal life, that will keep truth at the very center. Because it's one thing to be told about what water is like and the mechanics of swimming. It's another thing to feel the water and the motion of your body to, to get the required result that means you can swim a length of your local swimming pool. And we use the image of water here because we're all swimming right now. It's like the story of two young fish swimming along and they happen to meet an older fish swimming the other way who, who nods at them uh, and says, morning boys, uh, how's the water? And the two young fish swim on for a bit and then eventually one of them looks over at the other and goes, what's water? Sometimes we aren't aware of the culture or the water that we're swimming in all the time. The current and direction it makes us go in, we just go with it. And so actually it's good sometimes just to pause and think about the current water that you're swimming in. Think about this cultural moment. And one of the issues of this cultural moment is the issue of truth and authority. Everyone's searching for truth in the midst of just making it up regardless of coherence. Is it logical? Or consistency? Is it the same for all times, all places, all peoples? And then there's authority. Who can we trust? Who do we turn to who isn't lying or out to get something for themselves? As Christians, we believe the reason authority and truth exist 
It's because a God whom all authority stems from and all truth derived from is there. He is the ultimate authority and he is the ultimate truth. And some people may say there is no absolute truth. Now, unfortunately, that sentence isn't logical as it means someone is telling you that what they're saying is true. Truth doesn't exist. They're saying that what they're saying is true. It doesn't make sense. It's not logical. It's not coherent. But hopefully as you've grown in your Christian faith, you see how it connects and makes sense of the world you live in. Hopefully it helps you make sense of you and even your own identity. With God as ultimate authority and truth, how do we make sure that we remain in this truth? Well, we make sure that we're reminded of it again and again and again. And that's going to mean creating some holy habits. That's going to mean creating some rhythms of grace that allow you to flourish as a Christian. So as we carry forward what we've learned from Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 to 7, what can help us? Well, we want to be rooted. This is a personal thing. It's what goes on behind the scenes. It's about integrity. And so the question is, how are you looking after your own spiritual walk? What are you reading? What are you listening to? When are you carving out time to pray? My advice is to do what you can in the morning. And I can already hear the groans through the screen. But I remember hearing this great quote from a great missionary named Hudson Taylor. He said this, Do not have your concert first and tune your instruments afterward. Begin the day with God. Next is around being built up. In order to be built up, it means that you need to, to serve. Others need to be able to speak into your lives. It also means that you get to speak into other people's lives and build them up. As this is a, it's a two-way thing, isn't it? It's not just about you and your growth, but the growth of Christians around you. So where are your Christian friends? What needs have to be met in your local church? What passions and gifts has God given you? Next up is teaching. Where are you being strengthened in the faith as you were taught? As we step back a bit and think about the three that we've mentioned so far, we can see that we can be taught, we can be built up and, and spurred on and being rooted when we plug into our local church. So let me encourage you, love your church, love the local body of Christ, be keen and eager to learn. Could you bring a, a Bible? Could you bring a notepad or iPad and pen? And thankful. That's what we want to be. And it's about choices. What are we choosing? It was Viktor Frankl, the Austrian psychiatrist and a Holocaust survivor, who summed it up best. Everything can be taken from us, but one thing, the last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude, to choose your attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. But are we making sure we have an attitude of gratitude? Not just so that we're thankful, but actually so that we're overflowing with thankfulness. And how do we model this? Who do we need to make sure we say thank you to when we finish watching this video? And not just thank you based on manners, but thank you based on meaning. So, so sharing the reason behind your thankfulness. Of course, we start with God and, and based on this passage in Colossians 2, we can be thankful to God that Jesus Christ is our Savior and Lord. We can be thankful for putting people around us to share life and faith with. We can be thankful for the teaching we've received to this point in our lives. We can choose to be thankful. And it means as we share with others, we say thank you for being a friend. I can, I can share my faith with a friend. Thank you to your, your pastor for how he serves the church. Thank you to your teachers and SU leaders who have led your SU group for the time, heart and passion each has given to make sure that you had a safe space in school to continue to live out your faith in the everyday context of school. Choose to be thankful. And so to summarize, 
How are you caring about your personal walk to continue to be rooted? Who's around you that you can build up and so you can be built up? Are you plugged into a local church and hungry to learn, hungry to learn from the teaching so that you can be strengthened in the faith as you were taught? What situations will you face today that God will allow you to choose thankfulness? And as we continue to choose thankfulness, we should have this sense of overflowing with thankfulness as we see God's goodness to us, ultimately shown in Jesus. You're going to have some space now to be able to ask a few questions to one another and to share answers. Also, we've decided to share with you some things we'd love to signpost you to. Maybe this area of truth is something that you want to find out more about. Check out these things that are on the screen now. Why not take some time now to think through the answers to these questions by yourself, have a chat with some friends, or why not talk to some people from your church about them?